Kanda. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Miritam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Peshtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we'll continue the discussion about sacrifice in the 17th chapter Lord Krishna describes the three divisions of faith, faith in the mode of goodness, in the mode of passion and in the mode of ignorance. And according to the faith which one has acquired, people perform sacrifices also in three different ways. Sacrifice in the mode of goodness, sacrifice in the mode of passion and sacrifice in the mode of ignorance. So today I will describe sacrifice in the mode of ignorance. This is the 13th verse of the 17th chapter. Lord Krishna says, Vidhihinam asrishtanam mantrahinam adakshinam shraddha virahitam yajnam tamasam parichakshate. The meaning of this verse is, Sacrifice performed in defiance of scriptural injunctions in which no spiritual food is distributed, no hymns are chanted, no remunerations are made to the priests and which is faithless. That sacrifice is of the nature of ignorance. So, sacrifice performed in the mode of ignorance has got five characteristics which Krishna describes here. The first one is, these sacrifices are not according to the Vedic directions. They are against the Vedic directions. Then there is no spiritual food which is distributed. There is no proper chanting of the mantras. There is no Dakshina given to the priests and finally there is no faith in performing such a sacrifice. It is faithless, performed by faithless people. So Srila Prabhupada explains, faith in the mode of darkness or ignorance is actually faithlessness. It is actually faithlessness. Sometimes, and people <coughs> perform such sacrifices, example is given here. Sometimes people worship some demigod just to make money and then spend the money for recreation, ignoring the scriptural injunctions. This is an example of uh, sacrifice in the mode of ignorance. Such ceremonial shows of religiosity are not accepted as genuine. They are all in the mode of darkness. They produce a demoniac mentality and do not benefit human society. So faithless people, when they do some sacrifice, it's all concocted by them. It is not according to the Vedic directions. So here is an example in the Bhagavatam about a leader of a decoits who desired to have a son and he performed a sacrifice to get a son and as the uh, description itself indicates leader of the decoys his business was to plunder loot people uh, and uh, uh, make money so such a person you don't expect generally that he'll be following Vedic directions. So obviously the sacrifice he performed was something he had concocted 
it was not according to any Vedic directions. So the description is given uh, that uh, this leader of the Kites, uh, desiring to have a son, he began to offer uh, a sacrifice to the goddess Bhadrakali. Generally, these uh, sinful people they worship Kali. Sometimes they worship Shiva. So, this leader of the Kites, he considered that he wanted to perform a sacrifice to satisfy or please uh, Bhadrakali. And he decided to offer her in the sacrifice a dull man who is considered no better than an animal, also called uh, a man animal. Now this is not at all recommended in the scriptures, not at all recommended. So this was obviously the concoction of this particular leader of the decoits. He thought if instead of offering the goat in sacrifice to Mother Kali, if I offer a Narabali, that will be even better, even more pleasing. So, I am able to guarantee that I will get a son by performing the sacrifice. So, what did he do? He captured a man animal one dull-headed person for offering in the sacrifice but this person somehow escaped and the leader ordered his followers, the other decades, to go and find him. They ran in different directions but could not find him. So wandering here and there, middle of the night, covered by dense darkness, they came to a paddy field where they saw the exalted son of one Brahmana from the Angira family. His name was Jadabharata. He was sitting in an elevated place guarding the paddy fields against the attack of deer and wild boars. So they found him sitting there the middle of the night. Now a little background about who this Jada Bharata is, is important to know, understand. <coughs> this Jada Bharata was actually uh, the son of a very great Brahmana, a pure Brahmana who was very, very um, uh, well learned in the scriptures and he also was very rigid in performing all his brahmanical duties. He was, uh, he had completely controlled his senses. He was uh, free from greed and he was very sincerely following the brahmanical principles and doing his duties very nicely. This Brahmana had uh, actually uh, nine sons and he had uh, one daughter. So among the nine sons, this Jada Bharata was the youngest. He was the youngest among all the nine sons of that elderly Brahmana. And why was he called Jada Bharata? His name was Bharata but he was called Jada Bharata because this uh, youngest son of this Brahmana, uh, he had a, his history is described in the Bhagavata. But before he took birth as the son of this Brahmana, this uh, Bharata formerly was a, the emperor of this entire earth planet. He was a, 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 a very um, 
pious king he ruled exactly according to the scriptural directions but at a very young age somehow he developed detachment and he was very very desirous of leaving renouncing his kingdom his family his uh, treasure uh, his treasury everything and just go to a sacred holy place and sit there for meditation and pursue self realization he was very enlightened uh, king so at a very young age he actually renounced and then he went away to a holy place in the foothills of the himalayas a sacred place uh, and uh, there he used to take bath three times a day in the sacred river ganga and he used to just eat some fruits roots berries available in the forest and he would uh, uh, actually utter the omkara and uh, properly worship the supreme lord uh, in uh, meditation so as he was very strictly practicing he made rapid advancement in spiritual consciousness and uh, he had almost reached the perfection but he was just um, not completely perfect in his practice he was almost there so one day after finishing his morning duties bharat maharaj sat down on the bank of the river gandaki for a few minutes and began chanting his mantras while bharat maharaj was sitting on the bank of that river a female deer called a doe being very thirsty came there to drink the water while the doe was drinking the water with great satisfaction a lion which was very close roared very loudly this was very frightening and it was heard by the doe this doe was also actually pregnant so when it heard the roar of the lion it began to look very suspiciously and its mind became very disturbed so uh, it decided after drinking water to run away from that place since it was uh, standing on the bank of the river it tried to jump across the river and while doing so it somehow could not reach the other bank safely this doe it uh, slipped and uh, it fell down and uh, the baby deer fell from the womb and it was uh, it had fallen the baby deer had fallen into the flowing water gently flowing water of the river so that uh, doe which was pregnant was very very uh, uh, fearful condition it was very much distressed so having uh, delivered that uh, baby deer it uh, somehow fell down in a cave and died immediately bharat maharaj was sitting on the bank of the river and he was watching he saw the small deer bereft of its mother floating down the river which was gently flowing seeing this he felt great compassion he went and lifted that infant deer from the waves of the river water and knowing it to be motherless he brought it to his ashram gradually bharat maharaj became very affectionate to this deer and he began to raise it by feeding it grass by protecting it from the attacks of other wild animals and gradually he began to neglect his practice 
of uh, spiritual life. After a few days, he almost completely forgot all his uh, spiritual practices and due to attachment for the deer, he simply used to lie down with the deer, walk with the deer, feed it, bathe it, even he would eat with it, whatever fruits, roots, berries, etc. he had, he had accepted as his uh, food. So, uh, in this kind of attachment, days, weeks, months passed by, Bharat Maharaj did not realize that he had completely neglected his spiritual practices. The purpose for which he had left his kingdom and come, now due to attachment to a deer, he had completely neglected his spiritual practices and death was approaching. He did not realize. So one day when suddenly uh, he uh, could not find the deer which had gone wandering away from his ashram, he started uh, searching for the deer and out of deep attachment for this deer, he went around searching, 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 somehow he could not find the deer. He became mad uh, not finding the deer. So it became dark. He has been wandering, this Bharat Maharaj, away from his ashram and in the moonlight, he still did not give up the search. It was a full moon night. So there was some uh, illumination in that forest, uh, but he did not give up the search. He could not find the deer for some time and then suddenly death struck him and while dying, he was completely absorbed in thinking of that missing deer to which he, he had become very attached. Because of thinking of the deer at the time of death, Bharat Maharaj quit that body and in the next birth, he took birth as a deer. Now, in the body of the deer, because he had practiced spiritual life so much, by the Lord's mercy, he was able to remember his previous life. He realized that uh, he had fallen down from the path of self-realization. Even though he had successfully given up his uh, uh, real sons, his wife, his uh, kingdom, everything to uh, uh, go away to the sacred place and practice spiritual life. Still, he somehow lost his uh, self-control and uh, became attached to the deer. Now, having obtained the body of a deer, he was very much repentant and what he did was he became completely again detached from everything that uh, normally a deer would do. He left his mother deer in a distant place and he again went to the forest where he had earlier been performing his tapasya. In that forest near his ashram, he began to associate with other saintly persons who had their own ashrams and he would simply not bother much about eating or sleeping. He would eat little dry grass, this deer, Bharat Maharaj in the form of a deer would eat some dry grass and sleep very little and most of the time he would simply be thinking of the Supreme Lord. Now, <clears throat> he somehow passed his time in this way and uh, after quitting that body of a deer, he uh, took birth as the son of this Brahmana, this uh, uh, very um, um, uh, nicely self-controlled uh, uh, Brahmana who had eight sons. He was born as the youngest son of this Brahmana in a very nice family. So this uh, Brahmana, he tried to uh, teach his youngest son like he had 
trained and taught his other sons. The youngest son also he tried to teach. But this uh, uh, Bharat Maharaj who is now born as the son of this Brahmana, uh, Bharat Maharaj thought that now I had to be careful not to get attached to anybody. So he decided that he is going to act as if he is dull headed, he is deaf, he is dumb, he is uh, a useless worthless fellow. So externally that was his behavior. Inside his heart he was completely always absorbed in thinking of the Supreme Lord very very careful not to get attached or deviated from his uh, constant worship of the Lord within his heart. So the father was little uh, concerned that his youngest son was uh, not very uh, intelligent, not very responsive to whatever the father would try to teach. So father somehow did not give up his attempt to try to train this youngest boy also in all the scriptures and the good behavior and the, and the rituals, Brahminical rituals. But Bharat would somehow not at all take any interest and purposely if his father would say you should wash your hands after you go to the toilet, he would wash his hands before going to the toilet. If his father would say, don't touch anything with the left hand, which is sacred, he would touch with the left hand it only. And he would say, every sacred item should be taken with the right hand, he would use the left hand. Like that, how much ever the father tried to educate and train the youngest boy, because father was very attached to this youngest boy. So the boy did not learn. Finally, one day, this Brahmana, father of Bharat, had to uh, quit his body and then uh, Bharat Maharaj, Bharat became, was known as Jada Bharat because he was dull headed, apparently a less intelligent, a foolish person. So he was called Jada Bharat. So this Jada Bharat uh, became uh, I mean, he lost his father, then the eight elder brothers, they thought this boy is a, is a, actually a, a useless fellow, he is uh, not worth actually uh, being treated uh, like one of our brothers. So they decided that they are going to simply engage in some menial work like a laborer and uh, Bharat Maharaj, uh, this uh, Jada Bharat did not mind at all. He was in fact very happy that his brothers would have neglected him. So uh, uh, Jada Bharat was satisfied uh, with whatever uh, they told him to do. They told him you have to guard the paddy field against attack by the deer and the wild boar and all that. So he would simply sit there and guard and they would give him some food which was leftover remnants of some old stale food. So he would happily accept that and simply eat without any complaint. Because he was never eating for enjoying the senses. He was always eating simply to maintain his body. And internally he was fully absorbed in meditation on the Supreme Lord. So externally nobody could make out what this Jada Bharata was all about. So he was not given even proper clothes. He was just clothed in some bare minimum simple upper garment and a lower garment. And uh, he had a Brahmin thread but that thread was not uh, very clean. It was almost blackish and uh, people used to call him all kinds of ill names. They used to tease him, they used to insult him, but he never protested. 
and one night when he was guarding this uh, field this uh, leader of the decoits sent his followers to capture that uh, man animal who had run away they could not find that man animal so these followers of the decoit leader they captured bharat maharaj this uh, jada bharat and they found that jada bharat did not um, uh, protest did not uh, try to escape so they very easily uh, bound him with ropes and brought him to the leader of the decoits and uh, the leader of the decoits was very happy to find this uh, narabali who was uh, well built and who was uh, not uh, able to uh, understand what is happening apparently so they nicely according to their own concoction they nicely uh, bathed him they gave him new clothes they decorated him with some ornaments befitting an animal they smeared his body with scented oils they decorated him some tilaka they smeared some sandalwood pulp they put some garland round his neck all oh, this is totally concocted nothing according to any vedic direction in the vedas there is no uh, uh, direction or mention of offering in sacrifice a human being there is nothing like that so this is totally concoction by these uh, decoits they fed this uh, jada bharata very sumptuously so bharata nicely ate and then they brought him before goddess kali and even after bringing him they had uh, tied him so he was waiting there uh, and uh, they began to worship goddess kali they worshiped her with incense with lamps with garlands with some newly grown twigs with some sprouts with some fruit some flowers whatever they could lay their hands on everything that brought they simply started offering one thing after another one thing after another and they had their own rituals their own uh, songs which is not at all according to any vedic uh, uh, direction so as it is said in the uh, verse from the bhagavad gita मंत्रहीनम विधिहीनम इट इज नॉट अकॉर्डिंग टू एनी वेरी डायरेक्शन मंत्रहीनम दे आर नॉट चैंटिंग एनी प्रॉपर मंत्र एंड दे आर सिंपली कंकॉक्टिंग समथिंग सो देन दीज थीव्स एंड रोक्स दे डिवाइज देयर ओन प्रोसेस फॉर किलिंग Uh, jada bharata who they thought was a man animal uh, the, the shastras they give direction that an animal like a goat can be sacrificed before goddess kali even that is actually under so many restrictions for example the scripture say if at all somebody wants to offer a animal before goddess kali it has to be done only in front of goddess kali it cannot be done in front of any other devata and it has to be done only on an amavasya once in a month and the description of the goat is given what kind of goat can be brought it's not that any goat can be offered or any animal can be offered or some narabali can be given no it is only a goat only once a month and on amavasya and it has to be a specific type of goat now if somebody is following the scriptural directions they have to go searching for this type of goat and they have to search among so many goats and it is actually to dissuade this person from animal killing that is the whole idea to make them understand animal killing is sinful animal killing is sinful 
because there's so much attached to eating the flesh, animal flesh, meat eaters. So as a concession for them, the scriptural directions are there that they may sacrifice a goat in front of goddess Kali and the goat has to be of a particular description and it is only once a month. So it is idea behind this is to restrict, 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 restrict. So eventually it is expected that if somebody tries to follow the Shastric directions, they will give up this business of meat eating altogether. That is the whole idea in the scriptures. It is not to encourage somebody to uh, kill an animal and eat the flesh. No, it is never that. But these uh, decoids, where do they care for any scriptural directions? They concocted their own ritual. And uh, they mm. uh, decided to actually uh, use a chopper to cut the head of this Jada Bharata, this uh, man animal whom they had brought for uh, sacrificing before Goddess Kali. Now, you understand the position of Jada Bharata, he is completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord. He can understand that these people are going to kill him now, but he is not at all afraid. He is completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord. So, if the Lord wants, the Lord may save him, otherwise the Lord may not save him. He is not uh, fearful of the situation. However, the Supreme Lord is very, very, very uh, attached to his devotees and the Supreme Lord immediately arranged that Jada Bharat be saved. So, the deity of Goddess Kali being uh, inspired by the Supreme Lord to save this Jada Bharata was a great devotee of the Supreme Lord. So, Kali could not tolerate this uh, innocent uh, devotee being killed and being offered as Narabali by these decoits. So, immediately when they were just about to uh, cut off his head, exactly about a minute or a 30 seconds before that, the goddess Kali broke open the deity and with a loud sound, a thundering sound, she came out of that deity. She flashed her eyes and displayed her fierce curved teeth, uh, her reddish eyes glowed, she assumed a very very frightening form as if she was prepared to destroy the whole creation. She immediately snatched that sharp sword from the hand of the leader of the decoids and the same sword she used to cut off the head of all those decoids and uh, with great uh, pleasure she began to drink the hot blood that flowed from the necks of those uh, beheaded uh, rogues and thieves and uh, after uh, 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 beheading all the uh, cutting off the head of all the the coils and rogues and thieves she along with her associates she was not alone she was having her which associates, they all became intoxicated by drinking this blood and they began to toss around the heads as if they were balls and began to play with them. Jada Bharat was just sitting there as if nothing had happened. So after some time when the goddess Kali uh, she had finished her work of saving Jada Bharat. She again went back into the deity form and uh, Jada Bharat simply got up from there 
and walked away. So, you can understand that these kind of sacrifices, which are totally against the Vedic scriptures, are not at all beneficial for anybody. Neither they will give even the person who is performing the sacrifice any real benefit or result. On the other hand, because out of their foolishness, these decoits, they try to uh, kill a devotee. So, then they had to face this consequence of they themselves being uh, uh, killed in the process. So, therefore, the scriptures say that uh, never uh, uh, concoct something and do it is very, very dangerous. The results will be just opposite. So, I will take some questions now. <clears throat> what does it mean exactly when it is said, one should perform one's occupation for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord? Yes, the scriptures say, Yat Karoshi, the Bhagavad Gita says, Yat Karoshi, Yarashtasi, Yat Johoshi, Dadasi, Yat Tapasisi, Kaunteya, Tat Kurushwa, Madar Panam, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, in the ninth chapter, the most confidential knowledge. Everything should be done as an offering to Krishna for Krishna's pleasure. Now, very simple reason why everything has to be done uh, for Krishna's pleasure because everything belongs to Krishna, nothing belongs to us. So, when everything belongs to Krishna, everything should be used for Krishna's service. So, it's very natural because everything belongs to Krishna, it should be used for his service. Now, for his pleasure means it is in our interest. It's not because Krishna is in need of something. He is completely self-satisfied. He is full in himself. He doesn't require anything from us. But if we make an offering to him, it is for reviving our forgotten relationship with Krishna. It is for reviving our lost relationship with Krishna. Our devotion to Krishna is awakened when we make an offering to Krishna, according to scriptural directions. We are reminded who we are, who is Krishna, what is our relationship and by pleasing Krishna, by making an offering to him and pleasing him, we are able to actually revive our own uh, relationship with Krishna, which is the perfection of life, especially the human form of life is meant for that. Now, how can one do it, if that is the question that is asked here, then that is done by, the only way to do it is by practice of Bhakti Yoga. So, we begin by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and we try to uh, please the Supreme Lord by chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, then we follow the scriptural directions, how to chant. Uh, and here, the holy name of the Supreme Lord, we become cleansed in our heart. We gradually awaken our uh, uh, devotion within our heart. And gradually, further directions, the Supreme Lord himself will give from within the heart. Uh, how we should conduct ourselves in such a way that we are able to do every activity as an offering to the Supreme Lord for his pleasure. Uh, regarding the sacrifice that was described yesterday, the Daksha Yajna, the question is being asked, where did this sacrifice happen? It happened in one of the heavenly planets, as it is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, but the name of the place is not described, neither the specific planet is described. They just said it happened in one of the upper planets where uh, Daksha had chosen a specific uh, place to assemble with all the governors of the universe to do this great sacrifice. So, I will stop here. Any questions today? Okay, one more question I will take. What is the meaning, real meaning for Hare Krishna and Hare Rama? Which should come first? Uh, the mantra which we are supposed to chant 
it is hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare that is the uh, full mantra and then uh, what is the meaning it is a call for the supreme lord in order to actually uh, 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 it is just like a child cries for its mother a newly born child its language is crying it cannot speak so what can the child do whatever it wants to draw the mother's attention can only cry similarly when we begin spiritual life it is said that we do not know exactly how to pray to the lord how to ask something which is for our ultimate benefit from the lord therefore simply by calling out the lord's name the lord understands exactly uh, what is our requirement what is our necessity uh, what is uh, good for us what is our ultimate goal everything the lord knows so accordingly the lord will respond and just like a mother responds to a child's cry if the child is hungry the mother will feed the child if the child is to be bathed the mother will bathe the child if the child is to be cleaned the mother will clean the child whatever the child wants the mother will do child has uh, just got to draw the mother's attention if at all the mother is not nearby similarly in the beginning of our spiritual life we are uh, advised instructed to chant krishna's name holy name not only that krishna is incarnated as his holy name so this uh, chanting of hare krishna the meaning is we are calling out the supreme lord and we are praying or requesting to him please engage me in your devotional service because our position is to uh, do service so if we don't engage in serving the supreme lord then we'll be forced to serve illusion that is what everyone in this world is engaged in those who are not engaged in devotional service their position is to serve but instead of serving krishna they are forced to serve maya or illusion so everyone is servant that's our position every living being is servant but if they don't serve krishna then they have to serve maya they have to serve illusion and the result of serving illusion is we are going into ignorance we are already in ignorance we go deeper and deeper into ignorance as we keep on serving illusion in so many different ways but if we serve krishna then we come out of ignorance we become enlightened and we are able to get out of this uh, business of serving illusion and uh, getting entangled in this material world hari krishna